Hello and welcome, and in this lecture we are going to discuss all about the programmable interrupt controller. So the programmable interrupt controller allows hardware to interrupt the processor state. It's obviously programmable, hence the name, and it requires interrupt acknowledgement. So we're going to discuss all about this and exactly what the programmable interrupt controller is. So the programmable interrupt controller allows hardware to interrupt the processor. So for example, when you press a key on the keyboard, it will actually cause an interrupt to be invoked. When there's a hard disk operation, it will cause an interrupt to be invoked. When there's a mouse click, it will cause an interrupt to be invoked. And so on. So these are the standard interrupt requests for the programmable interrupt controller. So you have IRQ0, this is a timer interrupt. So basically every so often uh, it'll just cause an interrupt, like on a timer basically. And this is perfect because it allows you to do things such as multitasking in your kernel. Because as soon as the timer interrupt interrupts you, you can quickly switch the process or the task, right? So it's very handy, this timer interrupt is very important. So then IRQ1 is, the, is our keyboard interrupt. So, you know, you press a key and it causes an interrupt to be uh, called. Now when I say RQ0, RQ1, I'm not talking about interrupt number 0, interrupt number 1. I'm talking about IRQ0, IRQ1. We'll discuss more about that soon. And so this is the entire table and you can see the mouse, the ATA hard disk, secondary hard disk and so on, right? So we can basically use these IRQs to know when a certain event in the hardware has happened. So let me explain what the IRQs are then. Essentially, we map the IRQs to an interrupt number. So we pick this number. So let's say 0x20, okay? If we map to 0x20, interrupt 0x20, then IRQ0 would be 0x20. IRQ1 would be 0x21. IRQ2, 0x22, and so on until the table is uh, completed, right? So that is how that works. And you map the interrupts by talking with the programmable interrupt controller using the in and out instructions of the Intel processor. So by default, the IRQs are mapped to interrupts 8 to 15. And this is a problem because in protected mode, we have exceptions at those interrupts. So that's why we need to remap them. So your system has two programmable interrupt controllers, one for the master ports and the other for the slave ports. So the master handles IRQ, 0 to 7 and the slave handles IRQ 8 to 15. So that's important to know because they're two separate controllers, right? And you need to take that into account when setting them up. So these are the PIC control ports. So you know I was saying how we can use the processes in and out instructions to cause things to happen. Well, these are the ports that we talk to on the bus. So 0x20 and 0x21 for the master IRQ uh, programmable interrupt controller and 0xA0 and 0xA1 for the slave. So that's that. That's how that works, okay? So this is how you remap the master pick. Uh, in this example, we don't remap the slave. We are just mapping the master only. So you can see on the first two instructions, we put the pick into an initialization state. On the next two instructions, we remap the master pick to interrupt 0x20. So IRQ0 will start interrupt 0x20, IRQ1 will start 0x21, and so on, because we, we map it from that interrupt number, 0x20. So whenever the pick causes an interrupt for us, we are required to acknowledge it. If we don't acknowledge it, it will no longer interrupt us for that ISR. Acknowledging it is very easy. We simply do an out instruction on the, on the processor. The port is 0x20 and the data we send is 0x20. And by sending that, it acknowledges the interrupt request. So the programmable interrupt controller can get complicated. I'm not showing you the full specification here because you just need to be aware of how we can remap it. That's all you need to worry about. You probably won't have to worry about doing this ever again. We'll only really have to do it once.